In Londonderry, the Indian poke generally lives out its lifespan without blooming. In the late summer, look for the scarlet cardinal flower or the blue bottled gentian. Any and all of these wildflowers may be discovered along any fishing stream in Londonderry. On the westerly side of Londonderry is Musquash Meadow. The Musquash is an Indian name for muskrat. Muskrat is a relative of the beaver. In this area, the beavers have dammed up a small stream, turning a bog into a pond. Beavers are very clever builders, utilizing a location where high banks or stones aid in holding the water back behind their dams. Dams are made of interwoven sticks. If the area is large enough, the beavers maintain this dam indefinitely. Otherwise, they maintain the pond only until they have eaten the area clean, clean of the choice twigs and bark. Their favorite food in this area seems to be the oaks. Once they have eaten their favorite food, they move further along the stream and create another pond where fresh choice bark may be found. The old dam deteriorates and the first area returns to vegetation. After a few years, they return to the rejuvenated first farm, thus alternating between the two. A distinctive feature of the pond is the beaver lodge, also built of sticks and mud. This may be freestanding in the center of the pond, or it may be hidden under a high bank with only the entrance tunnel showing. In one of the beaver ponds in the Musquash, the great blue herons have found a last refuge against encroaching habitation. Here, the herons have built large platform nests in dead trees. Here, they lay their eggs and raise their young. With only an occasional bird song or the shrill peeping of the little frogs named hylas. These great birds noiselessly wend their majestic way over the waters. If we do not respect their solitude, they are in grave danger of becoming extinct in this area. Herons live on fish and will stand motionless for hours in a stream, waiting for an unsuspecting trout to swim by. The heron's spindly legs resembling reeds growing nearby. The musquash is also the home of moose, who, like the beaver, are a wild returnee to Londonderry. This great ruminant prefers meadow grass to be eaten in solitude. The white-tailed deer stirs to browse at dusk. One of Londonderry's first plants to develop in boggy places was the sphagnum moss. At its fullest development, it ends in rosettes. It can be easily gathered and is of great value to gardeners as a mulch to hold water and to enrich the soil. Before the snows of winter disappear, the sheath of the skunk cabbage pushes up through the ground. It resembles in color the dried leaves revealed by the melting snow. It becomes mottled and green as it matures in the warming sun. Actually, the cluster of blossoms is inside the sheath of the skunk cabbage. Its leaves emerge later. In contrast to the skunk cabbage, our native azaleas flower in clusters of blossoms held high on fragile stems. While the odor of the skunk cabbage is foul when the plant is broken, the fragrance of the azaleas is pervasively pleasing. The Rhodora blossoms often appearing with its leaves on angular stems, protruding from boggy pools which dry up during the summer. Next in spring comes the pink stem flower, whose clusters of blossoms toss under a canopy of deciduous trees. The last of the family to bloom is the swamp honeysuckle. 
Its extremely fragrant white clusters of blooms hang over our trout streams. If we return to the start of the fishing season, we find the trout lily's golden blossom, lifting its miniature head in damp wooded areas. Nearby, the jack in the pulpit hides beneath its canopy of leaves. Later in the summer, jewel weeds' bright pendulous blossoms hang on very fragile stems above the water. As summer changes into autumn, the marshland may be filled with bulrushes, cat and nine tails, whose brown seed stalks wave on high. In contrast to the cat and nine tails, the flamboyant leaves of the poison sumac wave in the autumn breezes. Its seeds hang below the stems, distinguishing it from the non-poisonous stagon sumac of the upland. Be alert to clusters of three leaves, indicating poison ivy, which causes a severe skin rash on most people. In the glacial period, as the glaciers melted and receded, they left debris on the upland, sometimes brought from afar. A spectacular boulder stands on the edge of the high range road, on the right as one proceeds north. As you round the curve in the road, the huge head of a dog or lion emerges from the bushes. This boulder is part of an arc of surface debris of rocks, which extends well into the Musquash Conservation Area. The area includes what is now known as Porcupine Rock. It was formerly called the Big Rock, and really is one of the biggest boulders in Londonderry. It was given the name of Porcupine Rock because under one edge of it is a cave in which the porcupines have had their den for years. Here, one may pick up the sharp barbed needles, which bristled from the animal's coat. On occasions, a porcupine may be seen in a nearby tree, nibbling on its leaves or chewing on its bark. On the upland, the bedrock has been covered for the most part with a soil which supports a varied plant and animal life. The milkweed's colorful clusters of blooms are abundant and may be found in any clearing where the wind has carried its seeds. In the forest, one may come upon the ghost flower or Indian pipe. In early spring, we might find the trailing arbutus, commonly called the mayflower in our area. The trailing arbutus ranges in color from pure white to a medium pink and may be found hiding under fallen leaves. Its fragrance is elusively sweet some of the bushes and trees produce catkins in spring, such as the white, fuzzy pussy willows. The soft pussy paws grow and are elongated as they blossom to yellow pollen. The poplar tree has catkins which are pinky gray. Poplars are also called quaking aspens as the leaves tremble at the slightest breeze. We might even find a white birch tree with its warm toned catkins hanging like fringe. An unusual form in nature are the fiddleheads, ferns, which in the spring emerge and unfurl into various fronds. The brake fern, when mature, stands tall upon its brittle stem, topped by a canopy of fronds. The maidenhair fern is a miniature variety, growing under a foot tall in moist ground. Another tiny fern is the walking fern, unique in that it grows almost exclusively on rocks. It is easy to identify the coarse growth of the polypody fern. If we are fortunate, we might discover a baby raccoon coming out of a clump of lady fern. The sweet fern is not really a 